serious about Christianity, if you're going to go search for Christianity, you better know what it is. So now if you're going to look for love in your life, you better know what it is. I, I know a song, it's just, it's just uh, in 1955, when I was a teenager, a young teenager, I was a kid. I was just a little kid. <laughs> there was a song, Love is a Many Splendored Thing. I don't know if you ever heard that song. Want me to sing it for you? No, you don't. <laughs> it was written by Sammy Fain and Paul Webster. And that may be a specific definition as the world can give you of what love is. It's a many splendored thing. And they write thousands and millions of songs about love and don't have a clue what it is. They make movies about it and tele shows, television shows, too long in England, television shows, and still they really don't understand what love is. So what we need to do is to understand what love is and we're going to look for it. So from all of the evidence around us, the one thing that has to be evident, the thing that the enemy wants people to believe and has done an overwhelmingly successful job at doing is that love is all about feelings and emotions. Yeah. <laughs> okay? I'm going to tell you something. Love, will, true love, will bring emotion. Mm -hmm. But love is first and foremost a choice that you make. It's a choice. If it was an emotion, if it had an emotion of, on a feeling, and based, how could Jesus possibly say, love your enemies? So understand, you don't have to like the people you love. But if you choose to love them, Feelings. I promise you, your feelings for them will change. That's right. And that's the truth. But it starts with a choice. It's not about emotion. Okay? I I like her a lot. Alice and I, let me see. <laughs> Alice and I have been married for 49 years. 49 years, one month, three weeks, and one day. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks. And we like each other. Yeah, a lot. I have a, a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of emotions for her. Oh, you're such a cute kid. Okay. Um, but love is a real choice because there are times in any relationship, I don't know that, that too much, maybe on her part, she has to choose to love me. I mean, sometimes I can. No. 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 But you have to be able to choose. Do you honestly, can you honestly believe for a moment that Jesus Christ, the only, the only innocent man that ever lived, the only man who ever lived without sin, who stood before all of the power of the world when he stood before Pontius Pilate on trial. Pilate was the representative of Caesar, the power of the world. And Pontius Pilate said, I find no guilt in this man. Crucify him. And he was taken, he was mocked, he was whipped. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They whipped the skin off his back. They nailed him to a cross. The only innocent man. The most torturous method of death that they could think of, the Romans could conceive of it at the time. And he hung on that cross. Do you think that he felt like saying, I love you? But isn't that exactly what he said when he said to the Father, Father, forgive them? That's a choice. If you let your emotions and your feelings get in the way of the Holy Spirit, and that's what you're doing if you choose not to love somebody, Are you examining yourself? Are there people in your life that you that you feel so strongly about that you don't love them? Love is not the emotion. Love is the choice that you make to pray, Father, forgive them, that you forgive them. Because remember, let me go back for a moment to the Sermon on the Mount. How many of you here know the Our Father, that prayer? Do you pray it? It's certainly one of the most dangerous things that I've ever heard in my life. Because when you say, forgive us our debts, as we forgive others, are you not saying to God, forgive me like I forgot, forgave him? And if you choose not to forgive, God, God won't forgive you. This is serious stuff. This is not, this is not, we're not playing religion here. This is life and death. This is reality. This is the reality of the Spirit that will bring you to a place where you can, like Paul, walk always in the triumph of Christ Jesus. Because there is nothing that a friend can do to you. There is nothing that an enemy can do to you that can cause you to stop loving them. Because it's not your love. For the love of God has been poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. It's not your love. There's no way we could do it. Because if it was your love, you wouldn't be able to do it.
You'd not be able to do that. But the love of God, the power of God, for nothing is impossible with God, will give you the power to look at that person that is most despicable to you, that is most hated by you in the natural, in the flesh. That's one of the deeds of the flesh. And you'll be able to look at them, and you'll be able to pray for them. And ask God's blessing upon them. Ask God's forgiveness on their behalf. And you know what? I don't know if that'll change that person one bit, but I promise you it'll change you. What is the thing, I, I, I don't remember what you call it when you say it, have words for a, you know, words for a, a word. When you have and words L for a word. L-O-V-E. It's Lord, our victor, evermore. So he, his love gives you the victory. And it will. Spirit of God.